All right, all right. Mm. Give everybody a minute to get in. My name is Jason Norris, member of Progressive Action, e board rep, RTO, train operator by trade. Just checking in with you guys. Going to be a few things we're going to talk about. First off, I just want to have a moment of remembrance. You know, um, we lost a, a, a brother to the family this week. Mr. Joseph and Larry and Joseph. Who, since I've been here for 10 years, I, I've, I've known three people to lose their life while working here. And that's Mr. Garrett Goble, and that's uh, Mr. St. Clair and Mr. Joseph. Um, I'll let you know that, you know, sometimes I, I forget the names and I stumble and I'm wrong for that. And anybody else who is out here with us, you know, working with us, we're wrong for that. We, we don't remember these names. It's, it's, I think it's incumbent upon us to keep these names alive and keep these spirits alive and, you know, to... to honor them because of they they're part of our family you know they they've become homogenous with us you know and uh i think it, it, it it's a great disservice if we forget them because we can become them so i'm going to make a more concerted effort to always have these names in the forefront when it comes to our causes and in our you know, our, our ability to advocate for one another and for ourselves. I think we need to keep these names to the forefront and, and keep them alive. You know, it also honors their families that we remember them and keep them alive in, in their presence and their goodwill and who they are. I think it does a, a great service to help the family with the grieving and having to, to deal with this in this tragic time. You know, no none of us come to work to lose our lives or to take a life, you know, and prayers out to, to the train operator and the conductor who were involved. I know the train operator and I know that train operator is going through it, you know, so the, the, these are the things that happen down here that we don't sign up for, but we, we have to hold on to one another and, and, and help persevere and go through these things and carry one another and the families as well. You know, we have to make a concerted effort to, uh, you know, keep that, that attachment because we sign up. When we come here, we think this is just another job and we sign up to be part of another family. So, you know, we, we have to do we have to do the family thing and keep our, our, our loved ones and our co-workers in it. You know, hold them up high when they pass. All right. All right. We're going to be talking about a few things today. Um, the first thing, let's talk about the charges that they put on Mr. Drummond. Now, we know that, uh, Chris is a staunch advocate for all of the people. I mean, a staunch advocate, you know, since I met Chris, Mr. Drummond has been, I mean, four wheels to the ground running, you know, even when he was on probation and he was asked not to be so out there because he's on probation. He didn't care. He was out there for us. He was out there advocating and he wanted better for us. Now, a lot of it comes from, you hear him say he had opportunities and, you know, he was other places. And, you know, sometimes when you have other work experience and you see how other working environments are, you see how toxic the one we work in is. And he's show, he shown that, you know, he's shown that. That, you know, this is something that is unordinary. It's not it's not common. So with the charges that they hit him with, and, and I'm going to tell you something right now. When we ran as a slate on the progressive change, that's something we encountered. The gerrymandering, the trying to knock people off of your slate. And Canelo was against all of it. What a difference three years makes. Now he's advocating for it all. Now he's locking lockstep with it. It shows you how much release and how much mm -hmm. cachet has 
the holds, the, the release and being beholden to somebody and, and it's a law of wanting to be in. Because if 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 he would have held true, he would have reached out or just made a, a blanket announcement or a statement that, you know, you don't have to do this. We're going to honor the signatures. We're not going to play no games. This is a total 180. This is a total 180. He was totally against all of this stuff when we were running. You know, using his famous line all the time, oh, it's asinine what these people are doing. It's asinine. Everything was asinine. It's not asinine anymore, is it? It's not asinine anymore. And this is the same bullshit games that these people play all the time. They want to knock off your 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 your, your slate, the people on your slate, the fight. Why would you handicap the union? The people are the union. Why would you handicap the ones who want to fight? Most times that's because there's an agenda set. And if anybody like that comes along, they're disruptive. Now, if they get to disrupt the status quo. That ends the administration. This administration looks like they have no control. But if you don't have, if you're exhibiting these things and you do not serve the people, then you're really not of service. You're not. You're not of service to us. And that's the problem. Is that there's these agendas going on that are servicing pockets in the minority. If we're not all succeeding, none of us are succeeding. You know, by the way, good afternoon, everybody. I see y'all out here. Um, I, just, I, I see it for myself when I sit in these e-board meetings. And um, the first thing I want to tell you about the last e-board meeting, the encounter I had with Mr. Davis after the meeting, I wanted to ask during the meeting, but I held off because the question I, I wanted to ask, I didn't want to put him on the spot. It doesn't, I really don't care how they view me. That doesn't mean shit to me. I work in RTO and I stay in RTO. I know how RTO feels about me. I don't care shit. I don't give a shit about how the administration feels about me. I don't care about my department slate and I don't, I don't, I'm not there for them. I'm there for you guys. You guys put me there and you guys told me to go to work for you and I do it. I do it. I don't care what the VP says. I don't care whether he likes me or not. That's of no consequence to me. You know, we, it's gotten this far that we don't even speak. You know, we don't speak. It doesn't bother me. I still can get my questions answered. I can get the job done doesn't bother me but uh what happened is this meeting was the first meeting we had to have after the statements were made from Karube and the statement was put out from the union by Mr. Davis now in my department I know others de other departments have um supervisor contact but RTO in itself is very heavy contact we sign in with ATDs and dispatchers. Superintendents are sometimes in the CRCs. TSS is in the CRCs. They're roaming the lounges. You know what I mean? They're there. We move about from terminal to terminal, from one hand of a supervisor to the next. In the middle of the road, their TSS is sporadically or just making their rounds. They're out there. So my question to him was, was there any other way to handle this situation other than picking a fight. And I asked him, and I said, do you have professional courtesy to speak with this man behind the scenes? Because we were told in the September, yes, yeah, September e-board meeting that the lawyer notes would resolve this problem. Now, my question is, when this information surfaced, I believe it was the end of July, August, this information surfaced about a side letter and all of that. If the lawyer notes denoted that you would be absolved and there was a misunderstanding of the understanding, then why not just pick the phone up and call a man and go, listen, even if we're not good, just handle your business behind the scenes. I've never seen the police department, which encompasses several different unions. I've never seen them publicly argue in the media or in the newspaper about their business. 
They may have differences, but you don't get to see it unless you're inside that house. And this is my question to him is why would you have this argument publicly? You are putting my people in harm's way. Because if Mr. Karube asks his membership to do their job to the letter, I mean to the strict letter, he's putting my people in harm's way. Because at least two thirds may not comply unless somebody gets far out of line. But you do have supervisors here who are chomping at the bit, waiting to inflict something on someone. I don't like that. I don't like that. Now, if and I told him, I said, now, if these people flare up and go on the warpath, are you going to be down at two Broadway? Are you going to get out of your bed at night? Are you going to be at every instance where somebody's taken out of service? And his, his answer was all. Oh, you're for management, you're for supervision, you're not with the union. I'm not not going to side with you blindly to bash somebody. My other question to him was, do you have any personal grievances with that man? If so, let us know because we need we need to be able to navigate whatever your personal grievances are because they don't belong to us. Your personal grievances are your personal grievances. You need to hash it out with that man, but don't put us in harm way and use us as cannon fodder for your argument. Don't do that. And it, 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 it pissed me off to see that he was more, more interested in his perception and whether or not we were protecting or, 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 or helping him or pushing his argument. Everybody in that e-board room, except for maybe RTO and a few others, RTO is not released. We're not beholden. We're not released. The reps who rep for you guys are not released. The people who really serve your interests, we're not released. And we're out here in the field and we hear what you're saying. Jossie Suggs, David Modest, myself, Michael Taylor, we're out here in the field. And we hear what you guys are saying and we bring it right back to the hive and we let them know what's going on. But for Mr. Davis, President Davis, to make it seem as though we should just be together. If I know better, I should stop my guy from going into a fight he doesn't need to be in. I shouldn't be pushing him into every fight. I shouldn't be backing him for every fight. And that's the problem. There's too many people that, yeah, yeah, do that, do that. And you wind up going to swing. Why? Why would we need to fight SSA? We really need to fight SSA for everything? We need to fight for them with them for everything? If we were wrong in putting out this information or just having the courtesy to go behind the scenes and keep it quiet, that that's all that was needed? That's all that was needed. You keep it quiet. Hey, how you doing? Listen, what's going on? Just sit still for a moment. We got this. We're going to make sure that we didn't do anything to hurt you. and We didn't want to drag you in nothing. Simple. Simple. It's just being adults about things and, and making sure because whatever happens to them, they try to force on us. Whatever happens in SSA and they, they wind up taking it, they try to. Use it as a bargaining or a tool or a leverage against us. Now, whatever happens to us surely happens to them because they say we're the larger bargaining union and that SSA has no choice. If we took it, they got to take it too. So did this kind of back and forth, we need to stop and become a little bit more aligned on the issues of the working environment and, and the, the tenants of our contract. Because we're all here together. Whether we like it or not, we're all here together. And you get to SSA because you were in TWU 100. You just don't get hired into SSA. You have to leave one to get to the other. And you come up through the ranks. It's the only way to get to SSA. I've never seen any open competitor for TSS, ATD, or TD. I've never seen that. So they have to come from somewhere. And how they leave TWU sometimes turns them into something else when they go to SSA. 
how they're handling TWU Local 100. If they handle very poorly, they go to the next stage and they're on a warpath, some of them. Why? Why? We're all here together. The railroad don't work without everything have to work with it in one hand and the other hand. Right hand, left hand. We need it all. We need it all. I don't understand why the fight is there, but we need it all. So, you know, this was after the meeting and it was kind of a, um, a little tenuous because I'm, anybody who knows me knows that I'm a respectful person until I feel disrespected or I feel you're trying to go at me and I, I turn into another person. You know, my mouth can become very reckless and I've, I've been told that, you know, I can say some shit. A lot of people, a lot of y'all who know me know I really don't play those games. You know, if I got a difference of opinion or whatever, I'm very respectful as to how I bring it about because I know where I can go with it and I know where I, I will go with it. I don't want to do that, but I, I do want to gain an understanding because I'm not around these people all the time. And when I'm out amongst the people, I want to be able to speak clearly and represent properly so i try to go for understanding of everything first you know i don't want to you know misspeak or anything like that i want to tell you exactly what it was and, and what my interpretation of it is and then i hear back from other people what their interpretation is that's just how we get the information to pass across that's it you know so excuse me this is just what i this is how I'm going to comport myself. And I'm going to stay that way. They don't like it. They don't like it. But I'm not going to side blindly. And this is one of the tenets or, or one of the problems that I had speaking with Mr. Davis is that he asked for my full compliance. And I told him I don't give anybody that. I don't. I don't give anybody my blind support. I don't. It's, it's, it's plenty of times where me and Tremel argue like two brothers, you know what I mean, over a basketball. But none of y'all get to see that. None of it. Y'all don't get to see. If me and him arguing and we in the same room, none of you would know. None of you would know. I treat him just like I treat my brothers. I give him the same amount of respect. Whatever's going on between us is between us. And it's not for anybody to know. Try to gain that rapport with the top four. Of, but I'm not here to blindly support you. You got to earn my support and my respect the same way I want to earn yours. So if it can't be earned, it's not going to be given. And then whatever's given is not honored or respected. And I don't want it. So if you don't want to respect me, you don't want to. So be it. We just passed by two ships in the night. That's it. But the same way I treat many of y'all have seen. I've, in inside of progressive action, we argue. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's like the loud house. You know what I mean? We argue, and we, but it, it, it makes for better ideas. It makes for better understanding. You know, the, the compliance, we're not compliant. It's just that everything is, after everything is hashed out and we shake hands and we dust each other off, then we come and we bring it out to the public. That's it. But y'all don't know how, how hard fought and how we have to stand on what we believe in our word and whether or not we're going to research or, or, or fact find something to make sure that when we bring it out there, it's out there and it's properly and we can speak about it. And we can stand behind one another and, 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 and embrace one another and hold each other up. Because we know the due diligence has been done. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So the thing with Mike Ruby, I didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like it because it puts my department at a disadvantage. And I don't know how many other departments have the kind of contact that we have. I see buses, you know what I mean? A lot of times it's end, it's end to end. And then, you know, you got supervisors who roam in cars. But RTO is very heavy. You know, we get our interval changes, all of that. All of that's dispatches. So those are supervisors we're in constant contact with. You know, my brothers and sisters who are in C Division. You know, there's supervisors crawling all over work sites. There's supervisors crawling all over the yard. Everything is very, is very much overseen. And we're not running, a, a, trying to run afoul of one another. It's not what we're doing. But when you put us in a, in a problem or a bind to where 
we have to watch everything for nothing, that's wrong. That's wrong. Something that could have been a simple two minute conversation could have quelled all of this. You know, it, it was it was at, it, it was astonishing to to see, you know what I mean, that there is no professional courtesy here between the two unions that are really running the show here. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. All right, we're gonna leave that where it's at. If you got questions about that, you can ask. But I'm gonna leave that where it's at. If anything needs more clarification, I'll give it. The next thing that we want to talk about, and you heard um, Mr. Drummond and Chris and uh, Tremel talk about, is this um, congestion pricing. Congestion pricing came up in the September, September, no, October, came up in the October meeting. My question was, did they talk about this in negotiations? And from what we were told, it was brought up. The company didn't want to speak about it at, at all. And the union was really at a loss as to how to negotiate for it. Because they did some polling and you had people talking about they wanted the easy pass free end to end from their door to their home and back. To me, that's a, a losing argument. We're talking about congestion pricing. We're talking about Manhattan, the island of Manhattan being the linchpin for this city because if you have to get in there is no other way you have if you come from pennsylvania jersey upstate you got to come into manhattan if you work in those locations if you work in brooklyn long island queens staten island anything going into brooklyn that should have been the crux of the argument is that we need to get your personnel into the city that's it because my understanding, if you've been living in Pennsylvania for the last decade, how you been getting to work? How you been getting to work? You've been getting there, right? How you been getting to work? Why complain now? Why complain now? You've been coming to work. That hasn't stopped you. Those tolls haven't stopped you. How you been getting to work? So why couldn't we fi fixate on the Manhattan toll? And we just being a blank spot. My, you got your Easy Pass registered already. You just registered with the MTA now, right? You registered that you're an employee. This, that, and the third. This Easy Pass module or, or the the node, the tracking node that's in your car, when it registered, it's blank. You get to move into the city for your working out as long as you're you're on shift or on tour or coming to work. You get to move into the city and you don't get charged. It's a blank spot. It's just a blank spot, right? It makes it makes sense to me. But what we really need to talk about is the true elephant in the room. I wouldn't mind paying fifteen dollars and fifteen dollars to get in the city if I was making a hell of a lot more money. More money means more control. That's that's tantamount. I don't give a shit if it's fifteen dollars going to the city. If I had, if I'm making far more money, I can go into the city because that the more money I have, the more control I have in my life. That's what I want. Fifteen dollars, maybe you park and ride if you're going from Pennsylvania into Jersey. You park and ride and ride into the city, and that may be far cheaper than actually driving in. But if you're making more money, you have more control of your life. That's the the key to this to this victory is not taking a fifteen dollar because that's what if they negotiate it down to maybe four dollars each way or whatever you know what I mean if anything comes about this you're still down eight dollars you know what I mean maybe forty dollars a week right that's maybe for a train operator at top pay that's an hour worth of work. Hour and a half, maybe two hours with taxes and deductions. Is it really worth it? Or five dollars an hour more? You see, you understand what I'm saying? Would you rather all right, you negotiate that down, but to offset that, I shouldn't, you know what I mean? I'm you're actually charging me 
to come to work. Port Authority pays for employees. Port, let me tell you something. I worked in the airport in my 20s. Mm -hmm. Port Authority has a lot of great benefits. And they start off at a nice, pretty penny. Very pretty penny. But my thing is, more money in your pocket leads to more control. And more control over your life means more comfort, better ease, better quality of living. So if they can negotiate it down to about $50 a week or whatever, it will add up fast. But if you have a lot more money in your pocket, it might not hurt as bad. And you may have, you might wind up figuring out a different way to circumvent that. But get the money in your pocket. Get the money in your pocket. Because if you can up your 40 hour a week paycheck outside of your overtime, that's a big win. That's a big win. That 3% looking a whole lot smaller now, isn't it? Yeah, some positions still are stuck. Some positions, you're right, Ms. Holman, but the more money we are making, the, the better quality we have, you know, and especially in this MTA thing, we, we have, well, it, it, Mr. Mr. Garcia, it, it does, it does cost them something. It is a loss in revenue and, and it will be reported as a loss, right? You got to remember that they're going to report everything and you got to be careful because they do put out narratives and they will report it as a loss and they will report it as a payment to employees, not a, a, a perk or a benefit for employees. Right? Remember that they're gonna if they report it as a perk or, or a cost, that's something we're gonna have to talk against. So please be careful about how they're gonna spend these things. Right? Because they will report it as a as a payment or, or a, a perk for employees. So be careful about what, what we do, but if we are earning more money and we ask for better perks or truthfully, it should just be part of the job that if we're servicing the city, we shouldn't have to pay. We are the thing that it's servicing the city. We are the people. We're part of the authority, the, the service, the we are the thing. We are the, the, the department. The You know, our passes probably are reported as perks because when we swipe, if you swipe immediately after, it says already swiped. It's not just an unlimited swipe. So be, be careful of that. Remember, they're, they're calculating how many swipes. They can figure out where you've been and how you've been. Um, should you have to pay when you're off duty? I think that's something we shouldn't entertain right now. I think we need to lock in us not paying to come to work. We need to lock those things in and have them in cement as cornerstones. And from there we expand to maybe having a discount when you're off duty because I don't know about you, but where else are you going to see a Broadway play except Manhattan? Right? See, NYPD has unlimited swipes. We don't, and we're, an empl we're employees of the company. But they're probably going to tell you that it's law enforcement. They can't be they can't be um, prohibited or slowed down from doing what they need to do, right? They're going to tell you that that's law enforcement. And law enforcement can't be restricted because they can't be chasing or need to gain entrance and somebody's pass doesn't work, right? Or if they got to, there's still keys to the gate that they have or whatever. They're never going to allow that. They're never going to allow the, It's going to be frowned upon to restrict law enforcement, Right? But this is going to be something that is going to be uh, important in the future 
because I, I I see you. I hear you, Ben. I hear you. I you know, but there's nothing we can do about that. You know, because we don't have any uh, jurisdiction over them. You know, but this is going to be a. Uh, uh, for me, I think this is this is going to be another milestone right here because this could either put more money in our pockets or take a whole lot out. That that's that's what the crux of it is. It's either going to put a whole lot of money in our pocket or it's going to take money out. Now I'm of the belief that I sh you should be paid more first. You know, and if I'm coming to work. I should be a blank spot. I'm coming to work. You can't do it without me. Everybody who works in Manhattan in those bus depots, if they're anywhere near that that um that congestion pricing area, it shouldn't be a problem. They should be able to come to work for free. Why should they be restricted or told how to come to work? It makes no sense to me. I've never seen a bus depot without a parking lot. I've never seen a bus depot with area where you there was no parking or whatever. I've never seen that. And for the most part, most bus depots I've seen have parking. I think East New York, I think, is the only depot I've seen that the parking is, is very restricted because of the area that it's in. Other than that, I can't... I, I haven't seen another depot that has that problem. So, if that's the case... The depots in the areas that you come into that congestion pricing area, any employee who has to work, they should be able to come for free for now until another deal is worked out or a deal, or a deal is worked out. Uh, the thing about Mr. Samuelson, uh, oh, Jamaica Depot is the same? I'm okay. That's probably what the bus, the, when it was the uh, Jamaica bus line. Was it or, or or the green line? Um, I don't know if if Mr. Samuelson should have quit or not, but I know it's not beneath him to pull stunts. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm. I know he desires a political career. That's something I've seen and, and I've, I've been witness to it firsthand. The way he uh, comports himself and moves around. I've, I've seen that. I'm not particularly certain what his thinking is. But if you're somewhere for your members, I wouldn't leave the room until they blow it up or close the shop. Because I want to know what's going on with my people. And you are right. Ben Ting, you are right. We should, there should be no problems with us being able to live here. We should be able to live here comfortably because I've said this before. The people who make the money we make do the jobs we do. We are the middle class and the middle class is the class that holds up the whole economy. Rich people are not beholden to time and place. The middle class are. The middle class doesn't go out. Any and every day of the week. Whatever our off days are. And most of us who are middle class. Outside of civil service titles. Who run jobs that run 7 days a week. And 365 days out of the year. But most middle class. People. Fill the malls up. On weekends. <coughs> Casual dining. We fill up on the weekends. Movie theaters. We fill up on the weekends. Department stores. We fill up on the weekends. Supermarkets, we fill up on the weekends. Green grocers, um, variety stores, all of these things we fill up. We are the people who are buying these things. We are the people who are buying homes. We are the people who are in Home Depot on the weekends. We are in Lowe's on the weekends. These are the things we do. Whatever off days we have, we are in these places when we have our off days. When I had Tuesday and Wednesdays off. My family knew Tuesdays and Wednesdays were most likely the days we were going to be going out to have a casual dining dinner. 
We would go to the movies. We'd go do anything like that because those are the days I was off. We are the people who support those things. Rich people, kids do not work in the malls. Middle class people, kids and low income people, kids are the people who are working in the malls. We are the service providers. Our children are the service providers. Our children are working part time jobs and things like that for high school and college. Our children are doing those things because of our consumption and our need to buy these things. We do these things repeatedly. We buy groceries. If you're rich and wealthy, you can afford to shop online and do things. You can afford to do what you want when you want. Absolutely, Mr. Jones. Absolutely. He is there for his own self-serving needs. And a lot of people don't get to see that. They don't get to see that side of him. They don't get to see him in his true regalia. They don't get to see that. You know, I've, I've encountered him several different times. I've, when there's this, if if it was such a, a a wonderful thing to have him around, why was our contract so shitty? In the same way he spoke for Metro North, he didn't speak for us, and we, he comes from us, right? He was born out of us, and he did it. He spoke better for Metro North than he did us. He's in the news, all of this type of stuff. He didn't do that for us. And every contract he had that he brought to us was subpar. Since I've been here, I've never seen a contract where we profited or benefited properly. Never seen that. While you at it, you know, if y'all can, donate to the to the Cash App. Donate to the Cash App Progressive Action. It's dollar sign Progressive Action 100. Right? When you're up here, just, you know, if you can, donate to the to the platform. Help it to grow. You know, but Mr. Jones, you are right. He he is here and a lot of people need to see that or see him in action. You know, he likes to be around smart people to challenge him to say he's a smart person as well. That does us no benefit. That does us no benefit. You know, being, uh, let me rephrase that. He doesn't want to be smart. He wants to be intelligence. Intelligence is the display of smart, right? Or, or the, the display of intellect. Smart is putting intellect to work. And there's a difference. There's a distinct difference. All right. I'd rather you be, be smart. All right. Everybody out there, be smart. Put it to action. Just because it's on display doesn't mean shit. Put it to action. All right. If you want to do or something, benefit us that way. Oh, what else did I have to talk about? Um, the uh, the char I already told you the charges with drumming. I, th I think that was total bullshit. If I didn't get to that, 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 that was total bullshit. You know, they they it, it's it's uh, election season coming, mm -hmm. and from this January or so. You're going to see them out for the Christmas season like they do for the holidays. They're going to be out there telling you that they never sleep and they never and they never spend Christmas at home and all of that. Let me tell you something. To me that's bullshit. I don't I don't need to see my president and the VPs out in the field for Christmas and Thanksgiving and New Year's. I don't need to see you then. To me that's bullshit. That's a fucking handshake picture. That's that's a kissing of a baby. I don't give a fuck about that. I'm sorry for my language. It just pisses me off. Because well, I've been at other jobs and I've seen this shit. I don't give a fuck about that. I want to see you on a random day. When when shit is real and, and supervisors are pissed off. And and superintendents got a hair up their ass. And they're fucking with people. Show up on those days. Don't show up with a fucking handout. And oh, you know, here's a plate of food. And you know, we really. I don't give a shit about that. I don't give a shit about that. Don't placate me. Come here when, when the shit is real, when it, it's, it's really bad. Do that. Show that to me. You know, pop up because you were in the neighborhood. Show that, that means more to me than anything. Pop up because you were here. Or because you thought, you know what, I haven't seen what's going on there at Stillwell. Or I haven't been to Continental. Or I haven't been to Bedford Park. Or I haven't been to White Plains. I haven't been to Woodlawn. I haven't been to Van Cortland. Just pop up and walk in on a regular day. 
Hey, how y'all doing? What's going on over here? Sit down and have a cup of coffee. Don't plan that shit. That shit don't mean nothing. Don't plan it. Wherever you at, pop up. Pop up and show you human. I don't need to see you in a suit and tie. Show up in your jeans and your sneakers. Show me you human. Show me you were sitting there. You might have been watching the football game and said, you know what? What's going on over here? Let me go out there and, and, and see what's going on. Show that to me. That, that, that means something. And pop up and shock the shit out of the, the managers and the supervisors that, oh shit, this guy walked in the room on a regular day, he didn't plan in, that way I can reserve, no, I see who you really are, and if you keep fucking with my people, I'm going to be in your ass, show that to me, show that to me, that means way more, that means way more to me than, than you planning a, a photo op and you looking good in pictures, I don't want to see that shit, if you are our authority figure, show it, show it. Show it. That's what I want to see. Show it. Anybody got any questions? I'm still trying to think about what I, if I'm missing something. Um, that's true too. You got to answer the people's questions. Oh, this is what I'm who going to see this or what we've been told, and I know a lot of retirees have been checking their portals because they've pre previously been retired for a while and they had things set up. This whole um, conversion of the health care is going to take, take effect January 1st. So if you're trying to see if you're docked in it, nothing is in cement from what I'm being told. Or not, not that it's in cement, but nothing is going to be revealed or quantified. Or, or, or certified until January 1st. So if you're looking to see if they're like at the, the hospital special, special medication or the, um, I believe it's the hospital special surgery in Manhattan, all these things, if they're going to be um, involved in this plan, you're not going to have that information available to certify or quantify until January 1st. All right. I know a lot of uh, retirees have reached out and they say that this hospital is not participating. And this one is from what I'm being told. And this is from Mr. Davis himself, is that none of these things are going to be available to see or check out until January 1st. And the impetus is for them checking on these things and cementing and nailing it down was because of some of the questions I asked and others well, two other people on the um, e-board, Mr. Springer and Mr. Kemp, we've all asked questions about how, because a lot of times when a lot of people have health plex and a lot of dentists and a lot of dental groups jump in when it's our open enrollment because they see a, a strong uptick with people coming in and they'll make their money by volume doing a lot of cleanings and things like that. And then by the time March, April comes, when things slow down, they jump out because they know it's not worth it for them to deal with you trickling in because they, the health place is not paying these people a lot. And they, they would try to make their money by volume for the open enrollment that when people jump in, they come in in mass and they'll make their money by in mass and then they'll jump back out. And that's what a lot of the complaints are. And that's what precipitated this checking to see if Aetna and all of these people are paying their bills to see if they're retaining hospitals and doctors that they're not just coming in and coming out. Because the quality of your care is based on their participation in these plans, right? Because if you've got 100 doctors who are top-notch quality and 80 jump out by the time March, the 20 who are there are going to be overworked. And you don't want to go to a practice to see a doctor who goes, all right, you're going to come to my practice, but you're going to see this other doctor. I didn't come to the practice that you have to see another doctor. I came to see you. But because the way the business is done is prohibitive and he winds up or she winds up with the spillover from other doctors and they can't handle it, they'll bring in other doctors who may not be on their par. And that's going to be a detriment to your quality of care. And that, that, that can't happen. That can't happen. So as long as I'm on the e-board, if you see me or you, you, I'll bring it to them. 
I bring it to because I'm I'm not getting any younger, and I'm conscious about the quality of care for myself and my children. I work hard, and I work hard for what I've attained and what I have. It shouldn't diminish because of some other factor. It should not diminish the quality of care that I want them to have. Is gonna usher them into maintaining that in their life going forward. It shouldn't be no. It shouldn't be any any downgrade. It shouldn't be any downgrade. I couldn't tell you why the, the investigation was leaked or whether or not it was leaked or not to the uh, to the press. I can't tell you that for certain. You know, I couldn't tell you that. I'm unaware of that the new, the new bus is coming out. I'm not. I'm not aware of that. I will talk to. I, I, I'm close with the TA Surface reps. I will talk with them about that and gain an understanding. That that is that is a ploy, Mr. Jones. That's a ploy that I've I've, I've been. Con- not, I've been cautious to say that they're playing a game because I don't I don't want if if that is true I don't want to solidify that and, and, and cause a, a mass uproar without it being certified or without it being quantified that that's that is what's going on you know but I, I've been very wary as as the it's like herding you know the the, the, the cattle to be slaughtered. You know, and I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that either because it, it's, especially with the healthcare, it, it's, it's crazy. You know, with the healthcare that you, you are, you're not. It, 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 it doesn't seem like they're so feverishly bought in to make sure it's great. You know, it, it's, it's. It's sort of like how Crazy Eddie, you know, the, the, the those 80s and 70s commercials where it was so, you know, so so animated. Why so animated and so adamant to get everybody converted in and not give them everything and not make yourself available in mass, right? The, the, the retirees should be inundated with information. They should be telling the union to slow down. Right, the retirees shouldn't be in a position where they feel they have to pull it all out of the union. They should be inundated with this information, and they should be so swamped and buried that they, they, in their heart, they know, well, damn, they did everything. But it doesn't feel like that. You're right, Mister Ting. That's something I spoke about when we were putting up our contract demands or whatever. You know, it, it's not even the elements; it's just the inherent danger. Of the work train pieces. Those pieces do not self-couple. You know, everything you do with a work train is physical and manual. You have to do it yourself. These systems don't work with it. Every every car in C Division is a separate entity that has to... Everything has to be joined physically and manually for it to work. Every piece has to be put together. It's like Lego, these guys. I, I honor them, you know what I mean? A lot of them my boys and I, and, and my homegirls. A lot of them, you know, I, I praise you because I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I've worked outside, physically outside, for like 15 years out of my life. I don't want to go to that. I, and they all see me. And then when we talk, I tell them, I'm, I don't see myself coming there. I don't see myself coming there at all. Because it's it's a different type of world down there with y'all. You know, all my brothers and sisters who work in flagging and in the elements and all, it's a different world. I've done it when I was younger. I'm not that spring chicken no more at all. And I'll tell you that in a heartbeat. That ain't me. That ain't me. Them elements, I don't I work the damn road and I don't even want to I'm pissed off when I gotta work walk two car lengths just to get back under the the structure still while they get away from the elements. I'm pissed. I don't want to, I don't want rain and none of that falling on me. I'll tell you that in a heartbeat. I'll tell you that. 
Mr. Blaze, what's up? This contract, absolutely it was. And I this is my this is my whole thing. If you weren't here in the beginning, this is why the, the congestion pricing. If we made more money, we'd have more control. We may not have to drive into the city. If we made more money, you might buy if you lived out in Pennsylvania, Jersey, you might buy a ticket and come into and come into the city and then make your way a different way. You may take the train or whatever. Because you have the ability to not have to work so much overtime or to, you know, most of the time when people tell you that they want to be in their cars and they want to ride independently, is because they want to put the job away. They want to be they want to travel without the job. They want to go home without being reminded that they work in transit. They want to be in their own atmosphere with their own company, listening to music or if they listen to the news, whatever it is. But they want to get away from the environment that they were in working. They want to separate themselves and decompress. That's why. Who are in charge of negotiation con of negotiating the contracts? That's the e-board in your top four. The e-board in your top four, and then there's also a negotiations, um, a negotiations team, and you got a team of lawyers as well who work for the union. All of the, the all of these this entity comes together, and when we have the meeting to outline the contract, then it goes to your VPs and the top four, the negotiations teams, and the lawyers. That's who is actively and physically in those meetings. Yes, we are in a toxic work environment. Absolutely. If you believe that this work environment is healthy, nine times out of ten, I'll show you somebody who doesn't have extensive prior work history. Because if you think this is great, you're sadly mistaken. Sadly mistaken. If you think this is great. Because this work environment is horrible. This work environment is hard. This work environment can cause you to become someone you're not, to act out in certain... This is not a good work environment. At all. This is not a good work environment. Sorry to say, it's not. And You're right. And it's getting worse. Well, it's, 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 it's going to get worse. But we've got a new generation that's coming up. And they're not taking any prisoners. They're not taking any prisoners. Whatever they don't like, they're going to get the hell out of the way. They, I see it now. Is they, they, they people coming in and I see them for three months and then I don't see them again. Some of them I see on the street and I go, hey, what happened? I, man, I gave that job back and I'm, I'm going, I'm doing it and I'm doing better. And I'm, I'm like, oh, wow. Like, they're not, they're pulling the trigger. They're not playing. How can we change the work environment? I think we need to stop accepting bullshit. We need to stop letting people put their foot on our neck. We need to stop giving one-way favors because the supervisor's your homeboy or the supervisor's your homegirl. We need to stop giving one-way favors. We need to start demanding that, listen, I did this for you to make it run. When you get a chance or when it so permits, you got to pay that back. And I think we need to stop being afraid to pull the trigger. If you're not feeling good, if you don't feel that you need to be at work today, take your ass home. Take your ass home. If something in the back of your mind is telling you you don't need to be here today, take your ass home. That's what you need to do. I don't give a shit about this, this, this uh, availability agreement. You come to work and you keep stressing yourself and you get in a heart attack, you're not available to your family and your life anymore. What's more important? Take your ass home when you need to go home. And anybody, every, everybody on here who knows me, I work my overtime. I work my overtime. I do. I'm, I'm about making my money. But people also know when they don't see me on a weekend or whatever, they don't see me, man, something, what, and they're coming, hey, Jay, what's up? What's going on? Nah, brother, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it right now. You know what I mean? And I do have kids. I have a family. I got to show that I'm working for something. You got to show that too. You can't be here making all of the money in the world and then you don't enjoy it.
That is correct. That is correct. We do have a whole swath of people who have just enough time to become a supervisor. And they become a supervisor. And to tell you the truth, a lot of supervisors do not deserve to be supervisors if you base it off their professionalism and the way they interact with people alone. If you based it off of how they interact with people and their professionalism, they would be excluded from the job. They wouldn't even be interviewed. And that's a high percentage of them. They would not be interviewed. They do not qualify. They do not qualify. You know, it, it's not even, I see you, Ben. It's not even about the knowledge. You know, having knowledge trapped in you and not being able to communicate it is a problem. And that's the bit, one of the biggest problems I've seen here is communication sucks. How you communicate with somebody, how you exchange information and, and interface, it's horrible. It's horrible here. It's horrible. You know, you got a lot of people who feel that they promoted that it, it's their turn to turn the screws because somebody turned the screws on them. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Total bullshit. You know, I, I absolutely their ego goes way up because now they think they're somebody. Let me tell you something. When you get your pass, if you start off as a cleaner, if you're an asshole and you're a jerk and you do not evolve, you're going to be that until you become the actor or the chief of transportation. You're still going to be an asshole and a jerk. Nothing is going to change. If you do not evolve and change for yourself, nothing's ever going to change. You're going to be who you're going to be regardless. So if you think by promotion, you're going to be accepted because no that's not acceptance what you're feeling is fear from other people because they fear that you have power to wield over them and what you feel from the other segment of people is disdain because they know you truly have no power because when we go on the other side of that turnstile and we hit the street you are nobody that's what you're feeling but you're intoxicated by the feeling of that fear because you've never had respect in your life. Nobody's respected you. Because respect feels a whole lot different from fear. Respect feels totally different from fear. And those who are respected, they walk with their heads high and they know they, they feel comfortable in any room. They feel comfortable in any room. Because they know they're not purposely looking to hurt anybody. They're just doing the job that they're paid to do. And this is nothing personal. But that is the problem is that too many people confuse the feeling of fear with respect. And if you never felt either one, you don't know how the, diff the difference is. Now, on to tier six. Tier six is a big thing for us. Now, I, some of you have seen Donald Yates' video and even President Davis. Is, oh, yeah, some people may may overpay. The crux of that argument or the fear they're trying to instill in you is that they cannot get NICES nor the MTA to nail, well, MTA in particular, to nail down what base pay means. They cannot get them to go, this is what a clear definition of base pay is. Now, the definition that the lawyer gave us is whatever you're running your trick, and that's in the contract. But with this tier six thing is... If it's not challenged, it allows them to have a gray area that if it serves us too well, they're going to try to change that narrative or change that definition. Because say you're making $180,000 a year. It's a $90,000 pension. What's not known is that the rate, the reason we got tier six is because they, they, Failed to manage the test, the test, the pension system properly, and they had to go in and ask taxpayers to, to prop it up, right? And that's not something that happens often, right? It doesn't happen often at all, but they'll try to make the payment seem as though 
it's coming from tax money. If I'm paying into a pension system and, and we're paying in in mass, and this pension system is supposed to be profitable, that's how we maintain it. If they mismanage it, the money has to come from somewhere because you cannot say that I promised you a pension and I'm not going to give it to you any longer because we mismanage something. Because remember, the people who are paying into the pension do not manage it. We do not manage our own pension. There's somebody, there's another entity nicer than it. They are managing this money for it to grow, right? They're managing it for it to grow. If it doesn't grow and the pension system is, is leaking or bleeding and they still have to pay out, it becomes a problem, right? And it, it, it's an inconsistency. But you promise somebody that they're going to be taken care of. Because remember, civil service p people or workers never make fair market. We're, no matter how good of a contract we have, we're always going to be behind fair market. This is what the trend has been. We're never ahead. We're never able to demand fair market. Right? If you look at the skills trades out there, the people who do plumbing through other locals make top dollar. The people who make, or the, or the plumbers who work for civil service entities do not get to charge those those fair market prices because their trade-off is the people who work fair market can be without work for two, three months. Civil servants are guaranteed to work, right? They're guaranteed to work, and especially if you can negotiate not to have furloughs in your contract or where you have work furloughs or layoffs. You're guaranteed work even if there isn't any work. You come on, and if you sit for the day, you sit for the day. But that's the trade-off, is that you make a little less than fair market because you're guaranteed. Right? That's checks and balances or the kind of balancing act that we work or that we have to work with. So we're never going to make what, the, what, what free enterprise makes. But the living we make, should be at a certain standard. We shouldn't be far off at all. We shouldn't be far behind free market. You know, that's something we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be behind free market like that. There's a certain level of um, inequality that is going to be natural to the to the to the dichotomy of it. It's going to be natural to the environment. That the people in free market are sometimes have an explosion. They have a five-year run where cash is like a waterfall. But then they have to plan for the next five years as well. Civil servants really don't... We're not in that kind of... We're not beholden to that. And that's the trade-off. We have consistency. They have inconsistency. They're, they're rewarded for the inconsistency. Because when they're asked to work, they work. Right, we have more of a consistency, and we have a, a a kind of ecosphere that we work in, and that we have to work with. That's just what it is. That's just what it is, right? We're not going to be able to do more than that, or we had those parameters to work with. No problem, but we shouldn't be suffering the way we are, and we shouldn't be held back the way we are. We shouldn't be restricted. We shouldn't be far. If free market plumber makes eighty dollars an hour, I don't see no reason why our plumber shouldn't make sixty. I don't see any reason why they shouldn't make sixty dollars an hour, right? We got a defined environment. Most of our most of our work can be handled in house. This is something the union is trying to get back to. If anybody in sub C, you know, you're going to see a big push of trying. They're trying to do more work in-house with the personnel that we have because every trade that the system needs, we actually have personnel for. So it's it's not a it's not a problem for us to do the work is whether or not, I guess, we want the work. Do we want the work? Are we going to do the work? That's something we have to ask ourselves as well. You know, do we want the work? 
Are we going to do the work? Are we going to put the work in? Now, I know my brothers and sisters in Sub C are, are, are waiting. It's been kind of inconsistent the past few years, you know, and from all indications, it seems like the work is coming back. You know, they're, they're drafting people and all that. They're, they're, they're going to be there. The work is going to be there from what I hear. So if it's here, we got to do it. Don't leave room for them to, to, to bring outside personnel because right there in Stillwell Yard, there's a temporary shed. You got contractors making switches. That's work we can do. All the work down here, we can do. Right? We can do it. I think we need to do it. I think we need to become more militant in that and taking our work and doing it for ourselves. I really do. I think we need to take that work and really do it for ourselves. Absolutely, it's a difference. It's a major difference. It's a major difference. And I know what you're talking about. You know, when we work in-house with our in-house people, it's, it's kind of like a tale of two cities, you know, with second-class citizens. I hear a lot of people who work in sub-C, when they work with the contractors, the, 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 the treatment, the interactions are far better. You know, they're far more civil. That's something I don't understand. I don't understand why that dichotomy is here. Why, why you would look down on your brother and sister when they're here working with you and trying to help you. Because you have a skilled trade doesn't mean you're better than me. Can you move the equipment that I move? No. And when it comes to the, to the work train, train operators, that's probably one of the most difficult jobs to attain and keep down here. That That's really difficult. I'm talking about really difficult to work with equipment from talking to my brothers and sisters down there. That equipment is shit. And you got to have certain nuances to manipulate that equipment to do what you want it to do. You know, that's right. A lot of people treat each other with scorn and they look down their noses at other people. But work train, train operator is is like being a heart surgeon or a brain surgeon. You got to operate something that it doesn't work properly and you have to have the skill of an artist to to actually make it work. You know, and it, it's big. It's big. You have to have a lot of patience. You have to work with another person. You have to have the confidence and the trust that the people you're working with are on the same page. You got to check in mentally with these people day in and day out. It is very difficult. It's very arduous. The environment you're working in, heat, cold, rain, water, all of these things affect your mental well-being and all and your ability to perform that job. So to me, you, you're like an artist working with the shittiest of tools and you still make beautiful art. You still get it done properly. I, I applaud you guys. I truly applaud you guys. Truly, because it's 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 day in and day out to do that at the proficiency level. You guys are skilled. You guys are skilled. Y'all ain't much road operators, but you know that's no head of there. You know. But I, I love y'all. You know, I really do. I do. I, I love. I love my brothers and sisters. I love. If we can come together and really make this work for ourselves, and I'm not just talking about RTO, I'm talking about all of us. We need to understand that we are a system of cogs and gears. Nothing works right without each other. We all need each other. We all need each other. We all feed off of each other. We all need each other. Buses, the trains, we all need each other. We all need each other. We do. But we need to understand that at certain times of the fight, you know, fights come in 12 rounds. Some of the rounds, we need to put our best foot forward and we need to put our, our, our true fighters in, you know what I mean? We need to go with our power punches. You know, we need to go and, you know, we, we need to, sometimes we need that. We need that. We need to figure out who the best fighter is and put that person forward. 
We need to stop worrying about how we look personally and what kind of glory and, and what kind of cachet and fame we're going to attain. If the person meant to fight that fight is the perfect one, don't put somebody else up. Put the person who's meant to fight that fight up. Put that person in line. And back that person. That's right. Bring out the heavy hitters. Let's run with them. We don't have to all agree and, 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 and be in agreement for everything. When it comes to our fight for us, certain things need to be dropped. And you need to tuck your tail and put your ego to the side. You know, this, this, this is what it is. This is what we need, you know. We need that. And it, it's it's... It just needs to be that. Well, not everybody's going to become a heavy hitter. We do need people who are going to jab. We do need people who are going to slip the punches that are being thrown at us. You know, and at those times when they slipping and sliding and moving, we need the heavy hitters to step up and, and knock those people out who are trying to attack us. That's what we need. I think we... I think we... Can... I think there's a general respect. I think we need to have more of an understanding. As the generations change, as technology changes, the way we learn changes, we need to accept those of us who have learned the old way. Some of us who have learned the old way cannot unlearn that. Some who cannot adapt, but we need to embrace and understand who we are for who we are. You know, if you got somebody who hasn't adapted or just sit down and have a conversation. We need to stop building walls. It's not about respect. We do respect one another. It's just that when we feel we're only striking a wall, we'll throw anything at it. And that needs to stop. That needs to stop. We need to, we need to understand one another more because through understanding, we will gain respect. But we need to understand and accept. You know, we got a lot of people here who are 60, 70, who are a little older and they're at the end of their career and they believe what they believe. But if they took a little time to sit down and have a conversation, they're not far off from the new people. They're not. All right, Ben, I see you. But they're not far off at all. They're not far off. It's just that the older person doesn't understand why and how they're moving. And the younger person doesn't understand why they're not moving. That's all. It's just an understanding. It's just an understanding. It's just a misunderstanding. That's it. That's all that is. It's just a misunderstanding. If we could take the time. Just, just take the time. You know. And find out who the go-betweens and the linchpins are. And see if you can broker some pieces or, or a truce. That would be nice too. Find out, find the people who are the bridges, and get the bridges involved. That way, you can understand. You may not understand what this old guy or this old guy may not understand what this young kid. Find the find the common ground. We find the common ground. We all can be, you know, we can all be a force here. But uh, that's say my piece, please. Oh, before I forget. My brother LaShawn Craig has a cash app. The cash app is posted. If you can help out, I'm talking about an incredible man, incredible person. I mean, truly knowledgeable, very relatable. If you ever come across this man, engage him. Talk with him. You'll be better for it when you come out of that conversation. Trust me. Please help and support him. Please help and support him. This is This is... This this is a very honorable, honorable man. Please help him out. You know, whatever you can do, whatever you can, please help him out. The man is an outstanding person, outstanding character. Help him out, please. You know, help him out. That cash app is posted in Progressive Action and other groups. Please give him a hand. And um, if you can, just reach out. If you want to reach out and talk, talk with him. Trust me, you will be better off. The man is knowledgeable. A lot of foresight, you know, the the mind of a builder, okay? So if you can't reach out, 
help them out. All right. All right, people. Good talking with you guys. Till we meet again. See you.